Hey there, my name is David and I will be your Linode developer advocate for this video. In fact, this video is part of a series that I have partnered up with Linode to produce. That said, there will be some things in this video that I would recommend you go back and watch the first video to understand kind of how we got to where we are. In this video though, we're going to take a look at a link shortening service. I guess you could call it a link shortening service, uh, but I use it uh, not only for link shortening, but also to keep tabs on the amount of clicks that I'm getting when I share a link through this service. So what we're gonna take a look at today is a service, a Docker service called URLs. Also, if you'd like to follow along with this video, a couple of things, again, go check out the first video in this series. So you, again, you can understand where we started and how we got to where we are. Uh, also, uh, head down to the description of this video where you'll find a link to get $100 in free credit to check out Linode for 60 days. So I know that there are lots of link shortening tracking services out there, whether it's an online service that you just go use somebody else's service or uh, different versions of hosted ones, that sort of thing. I've been using URLs literally for years now um, and, and I really enjoy it. And that's why I wanna share it with you here today. So here we are on our dashboard and across the top, we've got uh, some different uh, links that we will talk about here just real briefly or here in a moment, we'll talk about here real briefly. Uh, of course, on the right, we've got our, our logo and the, what the acronym URLs stands for is your own URL shortener. Below that, we can see that we're displaying one to 15 of 250 URLs that I'm currently tracking. And below that, again, it says we're tracking 250 and we've had 490,133 clicks uh, combined through all of the different URLs that have been shared on this system. Below that, we've got a spot where we can enter a URL. Um, and if we, uh, we can put that in there. So we would just say HTTPS, um, Linode.com slash dbtech. And then we could just do a Linode, oops, if I could spell dbtech and hit enter. And there we go. Now we can see that that is working. Uh, and it's just that easy to add a URL to, uh, to our database here. Uh, if we wanted to, of course, we can come over here and we can click on the delete button and click OK, just like so. And then here uh, down below, of course, we have the, the short URL, the original URL, the date that it was added, the IP address that added uh, the, the link there, how many clicks it's got, and some different actions. Uh, if we click on this short URL, it will obviously take us where we want to go. Uh, this will do the same, but this will add uh, a, a point to the counter there. Um, but if we come over here under actions and we click stats, uh, here we can see in the last 24 hours, that's our first um, our, our first tab as far as data is concerned. Next, the last seven days, we've got data points for all those different days. And then all time, again, we've got more of an, uh, a, a long-term uh, look at what those clicks look like. And of course, all of those update uh, basically in real time. And of course, above that, we've got, you know, the, the title of the page that it links to, the short URL, the long URL. Um, we're on traffic stats. We've got traffic location where we can actually get a general idea of where the, the traffic is coming from. Of course, take this with a grain of salt since so many people are using uh, VPNs these days, but at least uh, bare minimum, you're gonna get an idea of how many clicks you're getting and when they're coming through. Uh, of course, we've got traffic sources over here. This one doesn't do us a whole lot of good, in my opinion, but it's there. Um, and then of course, we've got the share option over here where we can sh click the link or, or share this on Facebook or Twitter uh, with all of this information in there. If we come to the admin interface, um, you know, we can we can click over here where it says tools. And here is more information about how to use uh, URLs as far as adding uh, bookmarklets by dragging one of these up into your, to your bookmark bar if you've got that open. Uh, below that, we've got a prefix and shorten. We've also got a secure passwordless API call if you wanted to use that for your own reasons. Uh, if we scroll back to the top, we can manage some plugins here. Uh, you've, you can allow hyphens in your short URL. Uh, you can turn that on and off by activating or deactivating. You can do uh, random backgrounds, again, by activating or deactivating. And, and then anytime uh, you refresh the page, you should get a new uh, kind of branded background there like we can see here. Uh, we can do random URL strings. Uh, so basically your, your domain slash random characters like, you know, like Bitly and things like that use. If you want to use that, you can, but just to activate it. I like to be in control of what my URLs are. Um, just I feel like it lends a little, more, a little bit more credibility when you're sharing one of these links, if they actually have an idea of what it's actually going to be. Uh, and we've got sample uh, pages and admin, or sample admin page and sample plugin, uh, so that you can kind of refer to those uh, so that you can develop your own pages and plugins and things like that for your setup if you wanted to go that route. Um, and of course, there's a toolbar down here if you wanted to do that. I never use it, but it's there. 
And that's it. That's how you can add URLs, look at the data on the URLs, and then go through the different admin interfaces, tools, plugins, things like that. So with that said, let's actually jump over and take a look at how easy it is to get URLs installed in Docker on Linode. Now, of course, URLs does have a website, a GitHub page, as well as a hub.docker.com page. Uh, the website itself is fairly straightforward, kind of goes over everything we've already talked about, so we're not going to get into any depth on this. Their GitHub page is great if you want to go look at the source code to get a better idea of what's going on and how things work. Um, and the URLs uh, hub.docker.com page is there, but they, they haven't, in my opinion, done a good job as far as explaining how to actually install this. Um, you know, if we scroll down, we can see that we've got supported architectures. You know, you can submit issues. They've got all this information. And down here, there are multiple command lines that you can run in order to deploy it, um, uh, a database container as well as the actual application container. Um, but this isn't intuitive in my opinion. I like to keep things simple wherever I can. So I've gone ahead and actually created a Docker Compose based off of this information um, that we're gonna take a look at deploying right now. So here is uh, our Linode. We are logged into our Linode account already. And here we can see that we've got our Linode tutorial, uh, well, Linode up and running. This is the one that we're gonna be working with. Uh, but before we actually get into uh, deploying this in Docker, uh, we do want to actually uh, go ahead and get our domain name set up. Uh, I'm going to continue to use the same domain that we've been using through this video series, which is tutorialserver.xyz, which is obviously not a short URL. Uh, it's just the one that we've got set up on this Linode. Uh, again, this would be a kind of a case more about getting data about the clicks versus actually shortening the URL. So um, of course, if you used a short URL, you could go that route. We're just going to kind of stick with this just for the sake of demonstration on how you might set this up. So what we want to do first is come over to domains. Um, and again, we're going to be using this tutorialserver.xyz domain here. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And then in here, uh, we can see uh, our name server records. Again, if you're not familiar with how to get a domain pointed to Linode, definitely check out that first video where I go into depth on how to do that. Um, of course, we've got our name server records here, uh, our subdomain, which is irrelevant. But uh, below that, we've got our A records, and we want to add a new A record to this. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to grab our IP address here and click copy. We're going to go to add an A record, and I'm going to put in uh, links and our IP address. And basically what that's going to do is create links.tutorialserver.xyz uh, as a subdomain, uh, and we're going to point it to this IP address, and we're going to go ahead and click on save. And now that that uh, domain name uh, is getting set up and propagating across the network, that sort of thing, uh, this gives us a chance to go in, get our Docker Compose uh, put into Portainer so that we can get those containers deployed. And then uh, once we've got that set up and everything appears to be working, uh, then we can go over to Nginx Proxy Manager and get our, our SSL and our domain set up uh, so that we can access it safely on a URL instead of an IP address and port. So in order to get to Portainer, again, we set that up in the first video. That's what we're gonna to use to deploy this. What we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna to go to this IP address and then we're gonna to go to port 9000. And we'll go ahead and get logged in with the user account that we created when we set this up. So once we're logged in, what we we'll wanna do is come over here and click on stacks. We're gonna click on add a stack and we're just gonna go ahead and call this uh, URLs like so. And then we're gonna paste in this Docker Compose that I created and we're gonna talk about this a little bit so we've got an idea of what's going on here. So at the top, we've got a version three Docker Compose slash stack. Those names, Docker Compose and stack, can kind of be interchanged synonymously when we're using Portainer. Uh, below that, we've got some services. That's what's listed there on line three. Our first service will be a database, and we're calling that DB um, just because we need to give it a, a service name. So we're just gonna call it DB. Uh, below that, our image, the, basically what Docker image we're gonna use is gonna be MySQL. We've got a couple of notes in here that explains the MySQL native password uh, that we're using in this command right here. We've got a restart policy of always, uh, basically meaning if your server reboots, your container crashes, whatever, this container will automatically come back up. Below that, we've got some environment variables. We've got a MySQL root password. Please change that. Don't leave that as example. That is just an example of what your password might be. Uh, so go ahead and change that uh, for the root password there. Below that, we've got a MySQL database name of URLs. Leave that alone. The application is actually looking for that database name. It needs to be URLs. A MySQL user and a MySQL password, those are the username and password that our application will, will reference in order to log into the database to create the tables in order to make the application work. Uh, you can change these if you'd like, the user, the MySQL user and the MySQL password. You can change those if, if you change them here, you also scroll down and change them 
here on the URLs DB user and URLs DB pass. Make sure that those line up with the username and password in the database container. Next, we've got networks. And under that, we've got an Nginx proxy manager underscore default. That's the network that we created in that first video so that Nginx proxy manager could more uh, effectively communicate with our containers to do the SSLs and the domain names, that sort of thing. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and put it on the same network that we've already got created. Uh, below that, we've got our URLs uh, container. Uh, our next uh, service, if you will. Um, and our container name is some URLs. You could change that to whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, and then this links and depends on are both set to DB, basically meaning um, the container is going to wait for the database to be up and ready before it tries to do anything. Um, and that's just what those are there for, is just saying, hey, we're gonna connect to this, but we're gonna wait to do it. Uh, below that, we've got some ports of 8183 on the on the server side of things. Uh, on the on the right side of that colon, we've got port 80. That's what the container listens to internally uh, for for any of its connectivity and its traffic, those sorts of things. Uh, if you're already using port 8183 on your setup, you can change that, but don't change the 80 on the other side of the colon. Our environment uh, below that for this container, we've got a URL site uh, environment variable. Basically, what URL did we just set up over on Linode a moment ago? That was links.tutorialserver.xyz. And of course, we've got that HTTPS in front of it. Below that, we've got a URLs user and a URLs pass. Uh, basically, that's the username and password that you're gonna use to log in to URLs once it's up and running. So please change those, don't leave those as they are. Again, this is just for demonstrative purposes so you can see what this process looks like. Um, below that, we've got a database host for URLs. Again, that is DB, like we talked about earlier, and we're calling it DB here because we called DB right there in this service above, and that's what we're trying to connect to. Um, below that, we've got a username and password. This is for the database. We talked about this already, um, but if you change the username and password up here on lines 13 and 14 up here that, that you're seeing, be sure that they match up here as well. Uh, the image that we're gonna use is the URL's official image. Um, and then a restart policy of always, again, just in case uh, your server reboots, something goes wrong, it will automatically restart. And below that, we've got our, our, our networks, again, of Nginx proxy manager underscore default, so that they can all be on that private net or that, that same Docker network for easier communication between containers. And because we've declared networks in this stack, in this Docker Compose, uh, we need to declare it down here so that we can tell it, uh, is it external, true or false, meaning, does the container or does the network already exist? Uh, and because it does already exist, I know it's hard to see here, but that is true right there in purple. So that's what's going on there. Uh, that's everything that we need for this to work. And uh, what we're gonna do is just scroll down and click on deploy the container. As long as we don't get any error messages, we'll be good to go and we can move on to next steps. Okay, so here we are just a couple of minutes later. We didn't get any error messages, so we're really stoked to see that. What we wanna do now that this page has reloaded is come down to where it says URLs. And we've got uh, some URLs, that was the, the application container, that was the name we gave it. And below that, we've got our URLs database one. That's the name that it gave it uh, based on uh, its criteria. What we wanna do is take a look at the logs of the database. And it looks like all of this looks good. We are uh, ready for connections, like it says right there. So if we come back over and look at the logs for the URLs container as well, uh, it looks like this is up and ready to go. So what we want to do now that this is up and ready in theory uh, is actually jump over to Nginx Proxy Manager so that we can create our SSL and configure our domain name to work. So in order to get to Nginx Proxy Manager, again, we talked about that in the first video, we're going to go to our Linode's IP address and then port 81, like you can see uh, right there. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on enter. We're going to get logged in with the username and password that we configured when we set this up. And here we are, we're logged in. The next thing we want to do now that we're logged into Nginx Proxy Manager is actually go ahead and create our SSL certificate. We want to get that set up first. So we're going to go over to here. We're going to come up to right here and click on add SSL certificates. And we're going to click on let's encrypt. Now what we wanna do is actually put in the URL, the full URL, including the subdomain right here. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there and we're gonna hit enter on our keyboard and then we'll click test server reachability. It says your server is reachable and creating certificates should be possible. If you don't see this, double check that your, uh, your A record is correct over on Linode. If it's only been a couple of minutes, uh, give it a few more uh, because sometimes DNS can really take a little while to propagate and take effect. So uh, if you see a red error message here, give it a minute, try again. If not, check Linode, make sure your settings are correct there. Since we're good here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on close and I'm going to uh, go ahead and agree to the Let's, Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. Uh, if, you, if, if you agree, of course, go ahead and check that out and make sure that you do. And then I'm gonna click save. 
We'll give this a minute. Hopefully we don't get any error messages. Sometimes we do, and we just have to do it again. But it's been long enough. We shouldn't have any issues. Uh, so we'll give this a minute to, uh, to, to, to generate and save the SSL like that. We're good to go. And now we can go over to our host and click on proxy hosts and click on add a proxy host. We're gonna go ahead and put our, our domain name in there again, the full links.tutorialserver.xyz. Of course, put in yours, not mine. The scheme, uh, is we're gonna leave this on HTTP because the container itself doesn't have a self-signed certificate in it. We're gonna leave this as HTTP. If it did have a self-signed certificate in it, we could then click over to HTTPS, but we're gonna go ahead and leave this on HTTP because we don't have a self-signed certificate in the container itself. Uh, for our forward, hostname slash IP, what we wanna do is actually grab the IP address uh, of the container on the Docker network. So in order to get that, we're gonna come back to Portainer and we're gonna look for our, our application uh, right here. We can see some URLs and we're gonna grab the IP address associated with it like so. And we're gonna paste that in there, make sure we don't have any spaces or any extra characters at the beginning or the end. And then the forward port, again, because we're on the Docker network, we actually want the container port, not the host port. So if we come back over, if we look at this, 8183 is the host port. What we want is actually the container port, which is 80 in this case. So we're gonna go ahead and put 80 in there. We can go ahead and cache assets, uh, enable WebSocket support and block common exploits. Those are all very common. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is come over to SSL. And then what we're gonna do is come over to SSL. We're gonna click none and we're going to come down and we're gonna find links.tutorialserver.xyz and enable all of these check marks to make sure that there's no way that somebody can bypass the SSL. It makes it force the SSL in our domain name. So we'll go ahead and do that, click save. And then what we're gonna do is scroll down and look for links.tutorialserver.xyz and click right there. Okay, while this looks like an issue, it's technically not. What we need to do here, we, our, our, our uh, SSL is working, this is good. What we wanna do is actually add slash admin to this. And here we go. Now we've got our logo, it says install URLs. We're gonna click that. And that's all it took to install it, right? We've created our HT access file. We've created all of our database entries uh, as far as the, the tables and that sort of thing. So once we're done with that, we can click on uh, the administration. We can get logged in here. So you put in your username and password and there we go. Now we've got our URLs interface up and running just that quickly and easily. Um, so that now we can start tracking the links that we're sharing uh, as long as we generate that URL through this system. And hopefully you found this video helpful and it would mean a lot to me if you did find this video helpful, if you gave it a thumbs up and maybe shared it with somebody uh, who is interested in this kind of thing. Uh, again, if you wanna follow along with this, um, links to everything should be in the description, including a link to jump over to Linode to get $100 in free credit to check them out for 60 days. But with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me and I'll talk to you in the next video.